affordable. The middle class is shrinking and the American dream is slipping away. And the government that's supposed to be working for all the people too often is a government for and of the one percent. But not this part of the government. Not the representative from California's sixth district. I promise you that I'm fighting every single day in Congress for our shared values. I am fighting for the rights of working people and against efforts to dismantle the safety net, for extending unemployment benefits and against tax breaks for big banks and billionaires. I've also asked my colleagues to join me in calling on the chair of the Federal Housing Finance Agency to impose a moratorium on Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac foreclosures during the holiday season. And as maybe all of you, some of you, have already heard breaking news, Fannie and Freddie have called off foreclosures during the holiday. Yeah, yeah thank you. <laughs> yeah, that would be good too. <laughs> thank you again for being a voice of conscience in our community. You are the reason I've been so proud to serve. Your support gives me strength every day. Thank you, and keep up the good work. So part of the reason that we're here tonight is to let Congress know they may be failing at um, what they're doing, but we're not going to fail. We're going to stay on the streets. We're still we're going to keep speaking for the 99 percent. Um, and we have someone here who might be sitting in the office where Lynn Wilsey now seats. And we'd like to make sure that he has the message from us as well of what the 99% expects of their representatives. And I'm sure we don't have any problem with that. And our wonderful friend, Norman Solomon, who will speak to us now. Thank you, Patty. Thanks, everybody uh, who is here. I've had the pleasure in the last few weeks of being at Occupy demonstrations in Eureka, in Ukiah, in Fort Bragg, in Point Reyes Station, in Petaluma, in Santa Rosa, uh, and here, and I think I've left out a couple. And just as at hundreds of other Occupy actions around the country, what we're engaged in, I think, is a combination of nuts and bolts action and faith. And the nuts and bolts action is based on the idea that it's not enough to care and to believe and to express ourselves on the internet, that our action has to include organizing and organizing and organizing for social change. And the other part of it is the act of faith that we believe in democracy from the grassroots, not the plutocracy, and that's a faith that we intend to act upon day in and day out and year in and year out. The question of Wall Street is the question of whether we're going to have Pennsylvania Avenue and Main Street dominated by the big corporations that hold sway on what we call Wall Street. I'm very proud to tell you that as a candidate, I am not taking a single penny of corporate tax money. Yay. Yay. And there are people who say, well, that means you can't win. Well, tell that to Bernie Sanders, who doesn't take a penny of corporate PAC money and represents us in the U.S. Senate. Hey, for 35 years. say that if you don't cozy up to corporations, that you don't have a political future. Well, Lynn Woolsey has had a political future for two decades now because the grassroots want progressive change, and we want people to speak for that change in Washington. Now, I don't suppose I'm the only one who sometimes gets up in the morning and I feel, after I read the newspaper, a bit of discouragement. Well, the late and great Howard Zinn talked about how when we least expect it, when we feel that maybe nothing's going right, all of a sudden an upsurge can transform history. Who would have thought when Mubarak was sitting pretty a year ago in control locking down Egypt, that there would be Tahir Square and the democracy movement overthrowing that regime. 
It wasn't supposed to happen, but it happened. Who would have thought three months ago, with all the talk about the Tea Party, that there would be a vast movement in this country called Occupy that would raise fundamental questions about who controls our government, whether it's going to be democratically operated or plutocratically operated, if that's a word. Is plutocracy a word? The fact is that people organizing day after day and year after year and doing the nuts and bolts work and yes, keeping the faith, that's how we get the change taken care of. One of my great heroes is Paul Wellstone. He's somebody who came out of social movements. Somebody who understood that everything we have to be proud of in our country today is because people organized and organized and organized. Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, women's rights, gay rights, environmental protection, stopping wars. That's because people were in the streets and willing and able to organize. And that's what we've got to do in the days and years ahead. And we're determined to do it. That's what it's about. Now, Paul Wellstone talked about representing the Democratic wing of the Democratic Party. And let's face it, let's be candid. When I grew up, and I was a teenager, we had a Democratic Party with great leaders, and then we had Dixiecrats, who frankly were racists. And they represented many districts in the South, and we had a struggle within the Democratic Party to determine whether the soul of the Democratic Party would be the party of FDR or the party of reaction. And it was the party of FDR that was ready, willing, and able to fight for programs like Medicare, which we celebrate today. Now, some people at that time said, oh, this idea of Medicare, that's socialism. Go to the elderly today and ask them if they want to get rid of their Medicare because it's quote unquote socialism. Well, one of the programs that I've been very proud to be part of nationwide is a co-chair of the Healthcare Not Warfare campaign, along with Donna Smith from the California Nurses Association, who you saw in Michael Moore's film, Sicko, and also Congressman John Conyers. And the two precepts of Healthcare Not Warfare is that our military spending is out of control, We've got to learn to nurture life instead of destroy it. We need to move beyond what Martin Luther King called the madness of militarism. And we understand that to build the kind of society we want at home means to drastically reduce the military budget. And today, we've got to do that. And the other part of healthcare, not warfare, is that we need at last in this country realize a dream that was enunciated by President Harry Truman to recognize, validate, and ensure the human right of access to quality health care for everybody. And we need that with single-payer guaranteed health care. Yay. Wall Street doesn't want it to be done, but it can be done. And when we talk about all that we want to create for a better society, everything we want, the schools, the preschools, the Head Start, the senior centers, the health care for everybody, the good green jobs, the public transportation, all of that requires that we break the stranglehold that Wall Street has on our political and economic system. And we are determined to do it. Yes. yes. I want to say that I believe in an inside-outside approach for political change. You know, sometimes people say, well, it doesn't matter who's in political office as long as we have a strong movement in the streets. And some people say, oh, it's all about having people in political office. It doesn't matter what people do in the streets. The reality is we need all of it. We need progressive power from top to bottom in our society to fulfill the values that we hold dear, and we're going to do it. So on that note, as I say goodbye for now, I want to invite you down the street right next to Double Rainbow. We happen to have a Solomon for Congress headquarters, and you're invited. Anytime. We have about five, six months till the first election, and then we're going to go on to November. 
We want to occupy a seat in Congress of the new 2nd Congressional District, which includes all of Marin County. And if you visit us at SolomonForCongress.com, there's a handy-dandy volunteer tab you can click on. And just let me close on this note. I wish it was not unusual to, as we have done, raise more than a quarter of a million dollars already for our campaign without a penny of corporate PAC money. But the fact is that the corporate PAC men and corporate PAC women are trying to gobble up our democracy. And we have the opportunity and the imperative to prove that grassroots power can defeat Wall Street power. That the grassroots can defeat AstroTurf and we intend to do it. Thanks very much.